Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. How's everybody doing today? This is Attorney Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I'm here to have a discussion that we've been needing to have. We got these black celebrities and they ego and they they 172 and they don't want to let go. They 96 years old, still telling us about uh, them cheating in 1953. They can care less that it's our moment, not theirs. They can care less that we don't care about them being no celebrity no more. They done made it so YouTube and Instagram, we don't need no more see y'all being no celebrity. So what they gonna do is just tell us anything, hire this publicist, likely a little black publicist to put out stories that they brushed their teeth this morning. So they, uh, what they, you know how they do it? Y'all know how they do it. They put out stories that they got a facial. I got one of these last week. Y'all ain't getting no pictures of it. Bro, you 65 or whatever it is. We don't need to see a, you. Of course, you have money and you're going to get a facial. You're going to take a shower today. Diddy offers fans a glimpse into his decadent pampering. Bro, they do these in El Monte for $50. With the suction and all that. Somebody go tell Diddy, I'm in here. There ain't nobody else on the internet going to say it. Tone going to say it. So what kicked me off is we, we had a story come across my feed. And I ain't never searched for Smokey Robinson. So we got a story that came across my feed. Because he plugged right into young black urban youth. And put his story out. I don't know whether he's selling a book or he got a new rap album coming out. Y'all remember when Smokey was rapping? He got to be 87 years old. I don't know what how old he is, but 70 something. And he told us that Diana Ross, while he was married, he had an affair and it lasted longer than it should have. And he got regrets. Look, after 53, I don't want to hear about regrets no more. I just want you to pass regrets to your grandbabies. I don't want to hear no more about your love life and stuff. That's just me. Can I talk about it? I want to get into it. I got all the smoke for Diddy because y'all done left this man in front of my doorstep. We got to hear every week about him dating somebody new that's 25 years old. I don't care. I don't know why that's news because it's not newsworthy. His relevance was in 99. It's 23. Wait, his relevance was in like 99. I don't want to hear. He got the revolt station from the memorandum of understanding that undercut black politics. It didn't uplift it. They handed out parts of stations to quiet black America down around that Comcast thing, not to make us louder. Gave us a bunch of music videos, oh, old music videos from 1998. Can I get to it? So they covered Smokey Robinson. It was on... It was on the cover of Yahoo as if he was, it's 1968 and he on the uh, Ed Sullivan show. Can y'all count with me how long 1968 is from here? Let's round up to 70 all the way to 2000. It's 30 years from 2000. So it's another 23 years. That's 55 years from now. From a, 55 years ago, this man was on Ed Sullivan and he's still on the cover of Yahoo for dating somebody. How long are they gonna steal your youth? Cause this is your moment. If you 40, if you 30, this is your time, not theirs. They had theirs. You were you weren't even born. I wanna I want I wanna slow it down because I don't know if y'all realize you don't have no retirement, you don't have no life insurance, you didn't get to buy multiple houses like him. Uh he's very low educated. Actually, both of them are. By what right are they still here? By the right that you have allowed this to actually be news and not complain that this isn't news. It is not news that Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson had an affair in this in the late 60s. I don't want to hear that unless it's tied to some kind of politics, because otherwise they don't have no relevance. He got his little earring in. Y'all see it? I don't know. Let me zoom in so you can see his earring. Out here, 112 with earrings in. Full black hair. I don't want to see none of this, bro. This is like when they covered Diddy falling in love 26 years after 1997 and more money, more problems. I want you to realize that you can't count. The internet got you in a time machine where all the years are the same. 1997 is 26 years ago. 
That's when more money, more problems came out. That video where he dancing around, they have shrunk black America into the ego of aging black celebrity being fed the nonsense by small scale publicists. So they got the little, the little black girls and boys running around asking for them to cover Diddy getting a facial. It don't happen on accident. Come on. Can we get to it? Please support the channel. Subscribe. Donate. Share this. 310-388-3499 to call in. I'm going in today. I want to hear from you because I'm going to hear from me. I'm going to let you hear from me. Let's talk about it today. Thank you so much. Yes, it's me. Woo, I'm about to get in. Everybody be like, how the hell else happened? It happened like this. I don't know what everybody else is talking about. We're going to get to Nicole Hannah-Jones. We're going to get to her in the Chinese coalition. She don't understand the numbers. He, she don't even understand. You say that we the root, but then on the other side, then there's a coalition and everybody the same. Which one is it? Oh, anti, uh, 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 no politics. No politics, no Kyle Hannah-Jones. Coming to the ring. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. This is how long Smokey Robinson been like on the stage. He's been on the stage since that outfit was cool. You listening to a man with a band where probably like four, five of them people, probably geriatric, if not like just passed on. And he still want to be on the cover about dating. You listen to this guy. This is 25 years ago. I need to say it to you because it seemed like you think it's five years ago. That's just weird, bro. You got this man dipping through Sesame Street almost 35 years ago, bro. Big Bird don't get old. Let me say it again. So Big Bird and Elmo and Trash. What's a gizmo? I don't know the names. All them, they don't, uh, uh, what they call it, Bart Simpson. All them don't get old. So Smokey said, I ain't going to get old neither. Let me dip right up in here and get me some more news off of 1968 music. Y'all going to listen. Y'all going to click this link. Smokey Robinson claims he had an affair with Diana Ross which lasted too long. I need to talk about it, because if I don't talk about it, it seems like ain't nobody going to talk. Let's get to it. 310-388-3499. But there is a bigger lesson here than Smokey Robinson dipping through Sesame Street or Diddy talking about he kinder and gentler, his name is love and some nonsense and how he didn't have no hair dye during COVID. So... Now he's going to go gray, but then he's going to go back to black because he got to be young to sell this nonsense. Diddy offers the fans a glimpse into his decadent pampering session, including a mani petty massage. And I want you guys to understand the context. Right now, there is one of the biggest stories that America don't want to cover. Matt Taibbi and Elon Musk, since Elon Musk bought Twitter, it is coming out that the Russian scandal was no scandal at all when it came to Russian bots. No group suffered more. No two people other than myself and Yvette Carnell suffered more as a consequence. You have the Cole Hannah Jones because of the Russian bots, not, and, and, and not without it. Because what happened is they isolated us. They made it seem like we were crazy and gutted your politics. Instead of this being a story, because don't nobody want to connect this, because this is the end of the Democratic Party. It is the end of black politics as you know it if this comes out. If, but we we don't have no media. All the Essence and Ebony, all they cover is Smokey Robinson and Diana Ross. So it's not just a laughing session. Understand that Joy Reid had a whole show where she calling us Russian bots ain't got no facts. Now she got a documentary where she talking about reparations through the Evanston thing that ain't reparations. It's basically some unfunded goal to undermine Adolf's. You got an article from The Intercept, black critics of Kamala Harris and Booker push back against claims they rushed in bots. The cover was Angela Rye. Matt Taibbi now is showing that there was a whole push. We are feeding congressional trolls. That is what Twitter was saying internally, normally you wouldn't get those emails, but Elon bought Twitter and it's coming out that right when they were accusing us of being Russian bots, hmm, with no proof, with no proof to undermine the real claim for reparations. Uh, California Task Force ain't reparations. That's not it. Every uh, thing ain't reparations. Reparations is a massive transformation of 
will move in the trillions of dollars with policy against the federal government. None of these people understand that. Your kids is going to suffer as a result. But they're giving you instead, let's talk about it, Smokey Robinson and Diddy. And you just like, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, well, everybody should be on the news. Diddy rumored to be dating city girls. What is this girl, 25 years old, 26 years old? This man, 56 or something? <sighs> My parents had me as teens, so that double that, that's how far they gap is. He could be her granddaddy down here. Let's talk about it, but he's dipping through Sesame Street. And he's staring at you like it's still 25 years ago. And you staring right back as if you got with this outfit on. You doing you got this outfit on listening to Diddy in 2023. This you in the back. Hold on, let me zoom in on you. Can we talk about it? I'm just trying to have a discussion because I guess everybody don't understand. I'm a kinder, gentler, you know, more loving me. That's what Diddy told us. That's a lot, right? All that, that I just said, it make you wonder, am I stuck? Come on, each one of you have to ask the question, am I stuck in a time machine? Did I like verses because of the music or the fact that it made me feel like I was young again, like it's O2 again, like it's before Uber again, like it's before Barack Obama again, like it's before I lost my house, like it's before I found out I don't have enough money for the retirement? Did it make you feel like you had potential again? That's a lot, right? You got nothing. He out here with a toothpick talking about like, like he cool. Get your old ass out of here. Tony O'Moore, this is uh, Tone Toss. Please, please tell me where you're calling from. Hey, Tony, this is Troy. I'm calling from Dallas, Texas, sir. So, Troy, look, let's get back to it. We got a story about Smokey Robinson dating Diana Ross. It had to be about like 50 years ago. Then we got Diddy dating this little baby. Ain't nobody saying nothing because everybody want their chance to do that in the future. But till they find out, R. Kelly style, that's your daughter. What you think about it? Tell me what you're talking about. Well, I think it's evidence of how systematic the distraction is against ADOS. And what they're showing you is that they got a distraction a la carte for each demographic of the generation. Come on. So they got your, they got the one for you. Can you hear me good? I hear you. I'm telling you, they got that empowerment porn. You know that's my word. That's what yeah, they, they got. got the, well, they got Smokey, Smokey Robinson for your grandmama and, and her generation. Diddy for the 30, the 40 something, and then this little 25 year old to make it relevant to the younger generation because the other thing in that industry, they hoard in the, the, the torch of celebrity ship. So that's why you got a 50 year old trying to party and, and uh, you know, mass and stuff with a 20 year old. So it's like that just that demographic should have been sort of shifted and split already. Even well, though well, well, this is this is what's going on. Let me tell you what's partial what's going on. White capital ain't uh, investing in no more black celebrities. So they trying to squeeze out. You ever seen when a lemon fall out the tree and it's on the ground and you still can try to make some lemon juice, but it's like an old lemon. That's what this is. White capital put a lot of money into these people in the 90s. And they like, we just going to pick this up and squeeze it again. It's squeezed already. Right. Squeeze it again. We ain't making no more limits. That's what you kind of see right now. I, I, and, and, and the thing about it is the money that they gave them to distract us, when we look at the numbers and how much is really we really need to be self-sufficient, they really doing all that decadence for pennies. And that's what makes it so sad in the long run, knowing what's really needed. You know, we need trillions of dollars. And you got folks selling us out for hundred thousand dollar checks and million dollar checks to be decadent in front of us, selling all of us and leading all of us astray, and and focusing on like, look, this is lunch table gossip. Who's dating who? I don't but even know, what, I don't even know what this is. Look, this this one I got on screen. This is like, did he wash his back with Irish soap? Like what? He used Irish? He, I use Irish. <laughs> Hold on, you the, the bar or the uh, or the body wash? He used the body wash. Well, I, God, well, also, 
thousands of dollars this facial in la is 50 dollars. it's just not news like wash your feet i don't want to see it uh go let me give you another example because i was going to talk about this later but i bring it up right now while you on this says what does it mean for something to be newsworthy newsworthiness is a term used to describe whether or not a topic is interesting enough for people to want or need to know huh so newsworthy is decided by the audience Y'all have decided a man getting a facial is newsworthy? Hold on, hold on. Y'all decided this was newsworthy? Taraji P. Henson shared joyous selfies from month-long trip to Bali. Ain't no news, ain't no worthy, and somebody going on a vacation. Good to her that she went. I ain't saying she shouldn't be able to go, but I'm saying to you, a person getting on a plane in America today for themselves, especially one of means, it's not newsworthy, but you have made it news because you don't know how to use the internet. Go ahead. So, any last thing? Well, well, I just I would just want to agree with you. It's just content, just to fill up time that we should be talking about other stuff. And you made a great analogy earlier. You know, Black Twitter is talking about lunchroom gossip, and the other side of Twitter uh, discuss and Matt Taibbi and all them are talking about what really happened in the past two, three years. That really kept us from really having important, equitable conversations diffused. So I just think that people being able to see them side by side and seeing what they give them to talk about versus what we are giving to focus and talk about is a great contrast. And I'll end it there. Hey, is Taraji Henson in uh, Bali News? I just want to ask you. I'm going to take the next comment. It don't seem like news to me. It just seems like somebody yeah. went on a trip. I like, like, look, I went, I went to Vegas. And I played the slots. Did she go to the moon? If she ain't went to the moon, I don't want to hear about it. And I don't even want to hear about her doing the Bezos thing unless she went Bezos in the capsule where you don't get really into like space, but you just get the tip of space and come back. That ain't it either. What? Yeah, it's, it's an unnecessary <laughs> update. You know how many, how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people across uh, the world got on the flight? And went somewhere and did something and ate ate food and drank water and, and it's you know, like, it's, it's poisonous. And you telling it it's to people that are abject it's poor. Telling, it's telling you on a zapping, <laughs> it, it's just telling you on the idea that a zapping lifestyle is something for you to be updated with, and it's just it's emptiness, it's empty calorie news. And you it, telling it, it to people that, so that are good. driving Uber and don't have, can't pay their student loans. Call it. Thank you so much for calling in. <laughs> Woo wee. So they told us that Taraji going to Bali is a news story. Well, that's because they don't have no news for black people no more. For Adolf's people, all we're going to keep getting Love Jones and uh, uh, what is it? Love and Basketball and Jody. What is it? Uh, 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 little, I forgot the movie that she was in. We're going to keep getting all that over and over. Five heartbeats. We're going to get all that over and over again. You know who won the most from Black Lives Matter? Black celebrities. Go look at how many commercials they got. New TV show. They had Queen Latifah doing flips and, and kicking people in the head. Look, like I'm just telling you, a lot of shows and commercials got gotten by black celebrity to calm everything down, make it look diverse. They got more out of it than anything black folks got. Can we talk about it? But this is why right here. Look, Diddy Breakfast Club. Mark Lamont Hill, Breakfast Club. Wait, that's the same damn near shot. Why are you doing the same thing to black celebrities? Because you don't know how to build audience. This is not it. This is not the, the I think that the reality is that black intellectual thinkers have followed the footsteps of black celebrity and entered into the mind of black of the black population at its lowest level, at the first floor. You got Diddy on Hot 97. Then you got Nicole Hannah Jones on Hot 97. Build your audience. I'm gonna tell you a story. I remember sitting with Vince, uh uh, the big dude that did Lady Gaga. And he had a little dude named Troy, who was our manager. Me, we sitting up at, at Interscope. I'm just giving you a, what it, I mean, you know, I forgot the name, whatever label she was with, whatever he was running down there in Santa Monica. 
But what it's a reason for this story. I'm, I want I want you to understand. They built Lady Gaga different than other artists. What they used to do with the other artists is put them on Britney Spears tour, and then you you supposed to be a star by association. They built her from the bottoms by doing little tours, little clubs, and stuff like that. Do that. Stop coming up uh, 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 from the nonsense level and come in through building organ. Oh, you can't do that. You don't have no thoughts. You don't have no show. You don't have no nothing. I don't know why you even here. Other than you're just sitting on top of uh, organic daily, weekly shows that other people are doing. Can we talk about it? And y'all don't even see it. Y'all not saying nothing. Y'all y'all think y'all kids going to be all right? I don't think so. I think Uber is just the start, not the end. College or not. In the chat, how many of y'all know what y'all kids going to do for a living? How many of y'all got a 17 or 18 year old and you already know what they're going to do? For, not a guess. Oh, I want them to be a doctor. No, there's a job that you know that they're going to do at 20 or at 23. Not they're going to go apply and hope something's out there. You got a problem. And this reality where, where they decided that Smokey Robinson and Diddy are still important sits at the root of part of that problem. You stuck in a time machine. You've been in so much time on verses that you don't understand it's you versus the world. Can we talk about it? How many, uh, this you in the background? Huh? Dancing to Smokey Robinson's successes? These Diddy got a facial. Can we talk? You got, uh, you go over to this site, Blavity, that covered uh, this nonsense Smokey Robinson. They over there talking about Nene Leakes' his son. Remember, she wasn't even a celebrity. She was begging to be a celebrity. Now she just next to kind of a celebrity. And now we find out about her son because she was, come on, bro. This is some weird stuff. You got the old black celebrities, uh, football players, messing up the HBCU colleges now. Hmm. Y'all heard about Ed Reed and Bethune Cookman? He was complaining that was trash in the office. Of course, bro, there ain't no wealth, ain't no, ain't no, you ain't did no politics. You just showed up. You got Whoopi on the view laughing with the wife. Am I thinking, uh, uh, they called me, they called me an old broad. Ha, ha, ha. Ain't nothing funny. Ain't nothing, ain't that, it's very serious. You got Ebony Magazine, they covering Usher and Missy Elliott's concert. Mush Usher, Missy Elliott, and Mariah are gonna do a concert in 2023. Bro, <laughs> heirs of the Gap Band suing BMG for Uptown Funk. Again, this is what you get when your thought leaders doing the same thing as some rappers. Can we talk about it? Nicole Anna Jones, the Beyonce education journalist. Don't never, never, never. Hold on, let me make sure. Let me bring myself up. Don't never, ever, never, ever, ever call me the Diddy of black politics. Don't never, ever, ever do that. But I mean, you know, there's levels to this. I want to talk about it, but it's hard, man. Let me take another call. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, what's going on, Tom? Hey, what's up, man? Well, I'm out here having this conversation, and Taraji's in the Bali, and Diddy getting a facial, and this is news. When I read the word newsworthy, it's not newsworthy to me on a national level, but it seems like Black people have decided to misuse news and the internet in such a way that they've made normal acts like washing your feet or getting on a plane news just so that they can read something. Give me your take on Smokey Robinson and dating Diana Ross in 1967 and Diddy dating City Girls. What you think about it all? It's so confusing because <laughs> I mean, people of that generation, I don't want to sound Asian, but they're not very computer savvy, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a little like who is this for? Like, it's supposed to be for us, but it's not clearly for our generation. So I don't know, like, well, it, it kind of is. We, we, I, I call us the reparation generation. Let me tell you what I mean. Y'all promising you're going to pay your kids college and got no retirement, and then your college is still, you still got the student debt. And then you also told your mama you're going to buy her a house. And then you told your grandmama where, who you haven't seen the will of her house, 
that you're gonna make sure you're there for her in her old age. When you gonna think about you in the mirror? What is your moment? Y'all gonna get old and mess around, look around, and like them pass you by. I'm just telling you. Maybe it's the samples. Maybe we heard so much music with samples uh, that we don't know what life looked like. Go ahead. Yeah, I, man, I'm just saying a word. I agree. It's just, I, it's just desperation at this point. It, it, it it's crazy. It's very it, desperate to talk about someone from It's crazy and it smells of desperation. Well, like, let me say, let me tell you what it is, actually. It's like, you could be the whole gossip magazine. Now it's in, like, real substantiated, like, news, like, like it's really crazy. Well, you asked me what it is, and I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's this. 2014, I write the decadent veil, Black America's basically celebrity wealth illusion. It says wealth illusion, but it's about Black celebrity. It wasn't just covered on Huff, though. It was covered by Madame Noir. Are we living behind a decadent veil that hides poverty? Went into the Black celebrity part, but it wasn't just covered by them. It was covered by Bossip. Bossip covered that decadent veil way back in 2014. I have told you guys, watch somebody come in, uh, try to do a documentary on Hulu or something, and just Act like they, it's original. Hold on. Or PBS or something. What I'm telling you is that this is what it is. As black celebrity invited us into their home, this is my writing back in 2014, through shows like MTV Cribs, we forgot the condition of overall African-American financial affairs. Understand what I'm saying. The, mo the, the, the role of black celebrity is to play calming mechanism for white capital. So we don't have nothing, and we're old trillions, but if we see enough Black celebrities, we're going to be all right. If we see enough Black celebrities, we going to be all right. So what they, what they realize is that the VH1 music videos are still in your mind. And they just going to tap into it by coming up with verses, having an old baby face come out, showing you Diddy and him dating some young girl. And making you feel bad about your own life, Carla. Tell me your last thoughts on this. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, it reeks of desperation. It's pretty pathetic. But uh, most importantly, I, I don't think they have anywhere else to go. I, I feel like America now is just the only thing that we create is propaganda and just content. Well, I tell you something else that, that gets created. Propaganda. Well, I tell you something else that get created. Beautiful uh, home videos by white folks that have millions of dollars. So I, I, I would tell you this. There is another side to America called, and I'm going to go into Pinterest versus Instagram and show you. We use the Instagram. They're using Pinterest and show you the difference between the two. We gonna, I'm going to show you in a second. We just don't know. We don't have no exposure. Yeah, and there, there's a general American love for celebrity. But ask a Mexican or an Asian, let alone ask a white person. There is a partition that we don't have where when they watch an NBA game, they don't see the potential for their life. They see some uh, black old men that's running around doing something that they never want to do anyway because it's too much running at 37. They see two people tackling each other and just enjoy it as sport. That's not us, though. Huh. Talk about it. We got... Uh, the new thing is with Lori Harvey, when you got a black show or a movie, you find you a black girl. And even if you don't date none, you go find you one and you, you bring her out whenever that happens. That's what happened with Michael V. Jordan. He had the little movie uh, with the family and the army. And then he dated Lori Harvey. Then she gone when that's over. Uh, none of this makes any sense. 310-388-3499. I want to hear from you. But what does make sense is this. Let me zoom in to kind of read to you guys the context of this thing. Again, Black critics of Kamala Harris uh, and Cory Booker push back against claims that they're Russian bots. Angela Rye and Joy Reid have speculated that Americans is the slaves using the hashtag ADOS to critique Harris and, and Booker are Russian bots. Hmm. This is a letter from Twitter to Diane Feinstein. In 2018, our initial inquiry based on available data has not identified any significant activity corrected, connected to Russia with respect to tweets posting original content to this hashtag. Congrats. And they weren't talking about ADOS at that time. They're talking about a different hashtag. But 
It's the same thing, bro. I don't know no Russians. And then they went in to talk about uh, internally. They were talking about congressional trolls are trying to get them to do to weaponize Twitter. Come on. Thank you so much, Steve. Is that I'm gonna be with you a short time, but I'm gonna be with you a real time. Diddy rumored to be dating City Girls rapper Young Mommy, Miami. What is this? Sean P. Diddy is rumored to be dating Carisha Brownlee, also known as Young Miami of the rap duo City Girls. The 51 year old music mogul has been rumored to be seeing the 27 year old rap star since back in June. Man, if y'all don't get out of here with this, call her what's your name? Where you calling from? Smokey Robinson the Diddy. What's up, Tom? This is Raymond calling from Maryland. Great to talk to you again, man. Give me a take on it. Uh, I mean, this show, it takes me back to the interview we did a while back. This is all the day ones. It takes me back to the interview we did a while back with uh, Byron Allen when he was breaking down the, uh, the Comcast lawsuit. And he was talking about how we don't own our media, the media is just black targeted, so they'll give us whatever they feel like it, and we just eat it up, you know, that the, the living in fantasy land, like, to an example for the basketball, it's only every year, legitimately only like four or five, you know what I'm saying, kids that get a full-time job, maybe, out of millions. Can I ask you a question? Dreams and ideas are fantastical. Can I ask you yeah, a question? Ahead. How old are you by chance? You sound like a young man. Uh, yeah, I'm 26, going on 27 in February. What year was you born in? 96. So you was born when Diddy was dancing around. You was born the yep. year that Diddy start dancing. <sighs> Hold on, you gonna, you gonna be with me for a second. Cause you represent, so you was born, yeah. you was zero when this is happening, one. He's still out here, he wanna date the same girls that's supposed to date you. Hold on. We going to get to it. Mm -hmm. So you got to compete with this old man for the same girls, mm -hmm. for the same relationships and mates with no wealth, no jobs, him gutting politics, because this girl 27 and she got to choose between old ass Diddy, old Diddy and you. Let me count. He said Ciroc and he got chains on and he got a toothpick in his mouth. Oh, I'm gonna choose him and give me a purse. He got the shades from 2002. Huh, y'all see this? But that ain't all. I want you to follow me on this. I'm gonna get into this in a second and explain these black publicists. The fact they're covering this old nonsense as news shows how crazed decadent veil black celebrity news is online. Smokey Robinson claims he had an affair with Diana Ross while he was married and regrets it lasted longer than it should have. What kind of... So that's the circus. It's wild, Tone. But watch this. this. Hold on. Like hold, on. Like hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This, we got some math to do. You said you was born in 96. All right. Smokey Robinson was on the Ed Sullivan show in 68. He was on the on as a grown man about your age. He was on the Ed Sullivan show in '68. So if you take 2023 and you subtract 55 years, so 55 years ago, because we get in the time machine and don't understand Diddy and, and and Smokey Robinson, it's all the same. No, this guy is Diddy was 25 years ago. This guy is 55 years ago. Hold on, because we're gonna come back yeah. and read this article. Watch this, young young man. Watch this. Listen, there's something on screen. Let's take 1999. Three, you're three years old. It's not your time. It's Diddy's time. In 1999, if you subtracted 55 years, it would be 1945. So Diddy's Smokey Robinson was a man named Cootie Williams. Do you think that Diddy? was willing to give up his time of being a youth, somebody who's supposed to be the center of the world, to hear about Cootie Williams and who he was dating? Talk about it. I don't. Do you think that? Hell no. Nah. Not at all. Because this, 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 this season is over, you know what I'm saying? And like you were saying before, we're going to be the ones to get the 
the only community that deals with that stuff where our celebrities don't graduate. They don't, like, it, it should really just be a four or five, maybe, you know, an eight. Yeah, MC Hammer five, came around in 92. Four, he was two. gone. He was gone by 95. You know, I'm going to tell you why. We've talked about why before, but I'm going to tell you in a second. But before I give you the why, and you got to walk with me, I want to give you one more level to this. You still looking at the screen? So I just showed you again that I showed you Diddy in his time. It was 99. So you, you, your time is 2023, and they want to take your time. Diddy in 99 would have had to give up his time to Cootie Williams. Cootie Williams was just an old man. He was considered, oh, I don't want to hear nothing about no Cootie Williams. Hold on. But Smokey Robinson was in 68. Let's take 68 and take 55 years off. That would be 1913. The charts in 1913, a lady named Elsie Baker, would, I'm just taking one of the people, she was popular. Do you think a Smokey Robinson that was your age in 1968 cared about Elsie Baker? No. So why is this news? It's like vampires sucking the moment from your life because they want to live again. They have found the fountain of youth, which is taken from you so that they can live yet again as youth in the middle of the news cycle. Telling us about dating people that should be dating you. Telling us about the fact that they are they had relationships in 68. And none of us know the difference because we don't know nothing but verses. And listen to Monica and Brandy sing back and forth. Go ahead, give me your last take on it. A lot of these, like, they're doing this because they ain't got no wealth. They, 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 that deck in the cell piece that you wrote, it was immaculate. It was amazing because it, 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 it continuously proves you right every day. A new celebrity comes out and our community does some stupid stuff or a story comes out just so that it can distract us. And it's like, we, sh we should be so past that point now in the information industry. I shouldn't have to be telling my parents or aunts and uncles or older cousins, yo, stop paying attention to people who are acting degenerate. Like, we just, everybody just reeled and, 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 and crucified R. Kelly and, and uh, all the other black uh, men over the past couple of years for the Me Too stuff. So it's like, why, what, what's the difference with this? Come on. He's doing the same thing. Ooh, I got a full, I got a full cue. I'm, I'm gonna let you go, but I appreciate you coming in and no, listening. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, bro. 26 years old. He's supposed to be dating this young woman, looking to be married or whatever. They are gonna go to the church, build a community, have him a child. God, did he want her too? He want all the young babies. Just saying. I mean, I'm calling the spade a spade. Smokey Robinson telling us about Diana Ross and Yahoo covered it like it's news. This ain't news, bro. You're 172 years old. Just saying. Smokey Robinson claims he had an affair with Diana Ross while he was married and regrets it lasted longer than it should have. The singer is known for his work as a singer, the as a singer and songwriter, the great music era, pinning his hits for likes of Temptations and the Supremes. That's what this was before finding his own success with the miracles before embarking on a solo career. The Detroit native grew up as a close friend with Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross, with Ross living in the same neighborhood as him. This is in the news. In his chat with Vlad TV, he spoke about meeting Ross and learning of her singing ability later on. I didn't even know she could sing. When I found out she could sing was when she moved. Why, why are we learning about this, bro? They remained close friends and work associates. Eventually, their platonic... What is this nonsense? Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Colin. What's up, Tom? This is Colin. I'm calling from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's my first time calling in. Give me your take on some on Smokey Robinson dating Diana Ross. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely wild, man. They old. They really not relevant to us. But I really just called to commend you about opening my mind up to this whole decadent bell thing. I had no idea prior to uh, waiting. I heard you speak about it around the time when you were talking about Byron Allen and the contact thing as well. And you were talking about JC and how he really just owned a small part of that sports team. And they just used that as a rule to, to, to basically justify the black people out of New York. And I really think you should probably do the documentary instead of letting somebody else come in and do a documentary about the death of Because that's a very powerful thing, man. When people hear about it, like, and, and the way you expose it, bro. It's like I've never. I, I just we really think these people are billionaires and they're really not, or, or most of our billionaires and they're really not. Like Romeo came out saying that their billionaires never. They didn't. 
can we can can, can we at least say what we know about two of those situations? They ain't got no good relationship with their sons and their kids. All of it. Everybody sit up and talk about their progeny and their seeds without money, right? They sit around and say, uh, "I just want my seed to be successful as a baby, as a toddler." Well, if we get to 22 and you got all the money and your kid hates you or dislikes you a lot, let me even say, did right. you did you fail? Just like as if you went to jail or anything else. I don't want to talk about no next kid. This one that you showed us and the seed yeah. and all that. I just need to know, like, when do we measure that failure? Anything else you want to say to the audience? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, man, like I said, everything you exposed to death and hell, everything I, I can just see one more confirmation to what you're talking about. Man, Casey did an interview where she was like, we really don't have it like that. I don't know what y'all thinking, but we really ain't got it like that. Uh, Soldier Boy buying fake jewelry. Uh, it just did so much stuff back to back. Uh, Gucci Mane couldn't afford it. It's like he sent like 10000 to somebody's funeral that was relevant to him, but he said he couldn't afford to give more because he has a wedding coming up. And it's like, we really think these people got whole time million dollars and they really don't. Hey, how would you feel if somebody told you that your grandmama had a, a relationship with them back in 63? Can, can we let that one go, Smokey? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm going to let you go. Right. Yeah, come on, man. I want to hear nothing right. about what my grandma did in 63, bro. This is disrespectful. Just trying to get news. Come on, smoke. But this is the way it's done right here. How do celebrity publicists operate in the era when the truth can mean anything? Let's go through this a little bit to kind of, I know some of y'all don't have this exposure. You think that these stories are just somebody hmm, at Yahoo and they sitting around, they like, Maybe we could just cover Diddy uh, getting a facial. Maybe we can cover Diddy getting a facial. No, nah, somebody took that picture. And somebody sent that picture somewhere. And they don't have no news today. And he ain't got no story today. And he really shouldn't even be in the news. But we need to we need to push up this birthday because it's not attached to no album. And he ain't even young. So what we going to do is make it seem like this is news. And feed that to black people driving Uber or struggling with student loans. Can we talk about it? And that that's some little pu publicist, little young black girl or black guy or little even white girl, but like they this is nonsense, bro. They just destroying this race. P Pop TV's flat, which concludes its first season. Again, this article is how do we how do celebrity publicists operate in the era when the truth can be, mean anything. Pop TV's Flat, which concludes its first season Thursday night, joins the pantheon of scripted TV shows that pull, the, uh, pull back the curtain on the inner workings of celebrity universe. The plot lines are obviously exaggerated, except the above scenario, which creator Oliver Lansley said is based on a real life situation. But Lansley is most fascinated by our society's evolving relationship with publicity. It's no longer a slightly exclusive, elusive mystic art, he said. Everyone can essentially be their own PR machines with cultivated social media presence, especially in an era where facts can be declared meaningless and the truth is different depending on who you ask. Flack, a new drama centered on the chaotic world of a celebrity publicist named Robin, starts with a dilemma. A superstar chef is about to be exposed as a cheating womanizer. Robin knows the drill. Time to distract the public with another story, preferably a sympathetic one. I showed you what I believe to be an example where Diddy got caught with the little young girl, the other little young girl, giving her a kiss. And then next day, we got Diddy buying his kids a car. I don't know. That's not news. If you have what they said he has, which is billions, I don't agree. I don't believe he has that. But if you have that, you buying a car for somebody is not news. But it was in the news to distract. Illness is always good. Anything wrong with your, any of your kids, Downs, meningitis, learning difficulty, she asked. The chef is appalled and remembers that his wife's mother died of breast cancer. So Robin arranges the perfect photo op. He will take his wife to get a mammogram under the guise of being a concerned, loving husband. When the chef expresses, uh, expresses doubt, so this is the storyline in the show, in a way, publishers are offering us alternate realities, and we could choose the ones we like most, Lansley said. For example, we might know it's a bit uh, coincidental that two actors who need to promote a movie are suddenly in a relationship. Didn't I just talk about that with Michael B. Jordan? But we'll still scroll through every Instagram photo and gobble up tabloids. But it's worked for ADOS. Y'all don't have no money, so they know that. So they show you a trip to Bali 
or something else and then they connect to you sister girl but then you don't see your brother or your boyfriend as much more associated with you you really should reject these celebrities and then now they're just selling like poverty products you know you got jay-z uber uh nfl uh rent to own he getting anything that's poverty products if you look across the spectrum uh liquors you got diddy with the ciroc liquors we're just starting to realize the huge power of it and it's changing our culture in a massive way lansley has heard mixed reactions from publicists who watch the show some say oh my god someone finally put my life on screen as others this is not at all realistic while many pr reps will go to great lengths to protect the celebrity's image the job is more likely to involve sleep deprivation or unpleasant conversation ask a real public relations executive you'll receive many answers they make sure their clients are portrayed in a certain light and maximize press opportunities they book interviews and magazines and newspapers on talk shows and podcasts now it's different for black folks too because they gotta get your eye and you don't want to see nothing but nonsense so if they show them reading the book outliers my mouth you don't want to see that they got to show them doing the tussie roll in their house that's worth 10 million dollars you click that let, let me click let me see. That he got real marble on the floor. You need candy to digest broccoli, but broccoli wrapped in licorice ain't broccoli no more. Godly, don't just say that. So they have to feed now the beast that is your attention, which ain't very long. Every black media site is basically celebrity gossip, all of them. There is no more black media. White people got media where they really got sites where they don't talk about no uh, celebrities. Let's use an example. Now, I ain't saying that nobody's going to cover this, but when Snoop was in the murder case, you might as well stop all the black America. You might as well. You got people that was more invested on Snoop's murder case than their own brother's drug charge in 93. Think about it. Think back to it. Got to watch all the, the case and all that. How many white people don't even know that this man, Alec, Alec Baldwin, is involved in this uh this manslaughter? They might generally know. They don't, they might find out he got charged six months from now because it's not relevant. They don't need to escape their life. They are living in their own life. What happens to this man don't matter. Somebody would say, he's not that popular. Well, then again, he played Trump and his Saturday Night Live has 33 million views. And that's like a year and a half ago, two years ago. So he's extremely popular. They have a world where celebrity are put in their place. You know, I was just telling somebody today, I would never want to be a comedian. I don't want to hear nothing about no genius or nothing. I don't want to get, I don't want to go on auditions as people tell me that I'm not good and enough and all this and kick me down, the, uh, at least not physically, but literally kick you out. I don't want to let stand in the mirror and talk about that's not a good job to me you can go wish for that i don't want to play football i don't want to tackle nobody to the ground you guys have taken these awful jobs and elevated them to an elite status because y'all don't know about no nobody rich from a regular job a good job a regular good job where they work like an hour and two hours and then they go let somebody else run around and come up with skits and tackle because that's what white people took all of that part of america and left us this nonsense. I want to talk about it. Can I get to it? Thank you so much, Stephen. I'm having this discussion because ain't nobody else having it. This is how ADOS was created. This is how y'all got that reparations thing with California. If I don't have, look, you guys have to understand. I know a lot of y'all weren't on that call. You had to wait four hours to just say yay as a supporter of the bill. There were about four other bills on the California task force bill. I had about a hundred people call that sat on the phone. One guy was on a truck for three hours to say yay all across the country. They have failed you with the California task force. They have failed you with Evanston. They have failed you with Nicola Ham Jones Hulu project. They have failed you with that uh, payback documentary about Evanston. And you gonna deal with the consequences here now or for some time soon. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm so calling from North Carolina. How are you doing today, bro? What's up, man? Give me your take. Uh, what you think? Should Diana Ross get back with Smokey or stay with what she with? How should we do this? I mean, I'm just saying. 
One more question. I'm sorry for cutting you off. All right. So Jay service on there on, on the chat, and we want to know because I, I got a bet with Jay. If you wrap broccoli with licorice, is it still broccoli? <laughs> That's Diddy dancing in the main other house. <laughs> it just can't be. Go ahead. <laughs> no, but uh, this type of uh, pretending, the type of uh, celebrity pretending. It's starting to spill over into our real lives. I have uh, friends, man, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, I have some friends in foreclosure, in bankruptcy, and all they're talking about is they're going to build a uh, multi use apartment complex, a hundred unit apartment complex, and start car dealerships. I feel like a fool even talking to them. You know, I could barely get a hold of four or five hundred dollars at one time, and they're talking about they're going to get uh, 40 and 20 and 40 million. And you have to like listen to them like this, like they're serious. I'm like, look, man, we don't have any money. They don't. They don't. And, and this type they don't of know. Celebrity works, this they, type of, they don't know things cost. They don't know things cost money. They think it just costs thought. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you just pay for exactly. pay for your so, business with your thought, and then they don't. You know what else happens? Because they <laughs> never get their thought past like the first level. They never had it kicked outside. They never brought it to the bank, and the bank be like. Oh, get this out of here. Throw exactly. oh, it in the trash can. There ain't no thought. That's just like a a, a, a wild idea of a seven-year-old. But go ahead. <laughs> exactly. If, if, if this is the thing about our, our identity, constantly pretending to be a, a Indian or a Hebrew Israelite, constantly pretending like you got money, constantly pretending like you are uh, a regular American. It's just the, the pretending industry that was like, the pretend industry is just that's starting to affect us so bad because we really are getting to a zero world. We really get there. I think most of us are there now. So going forward, and we continue with this celebrity worship and, and watching every move or uh, crazy celebrity do shoot, shoot each other in the foot and all kind of crazy stuff. It's going to be, it seems like it's going to get worse. It's not getting better. That's all I wanted to say. Smokey agreed with you. He said, so that's a circus. That's Barton, Barton Bailey and all of that. I'm gonna let it go. Call it. Thank you so much. Oh, they got Smokey out here dating Diana Ross. So again, let's do the math. So 2023, we go back to 68 when he was on the Sullivan. That's 55 years ago. I just, I just asked the question. You think this Diddy, who in his prime got J Lo and she young, you think he care about Cootie Williams and want to hear about who Cootie Williams was dating in 45? Cuckoo, you know they got little nicknames for these old people to make them still seem cool. Y'all seen Stephen A. out there looking like a uh, uh, white man can't jump? You old, bro. Stop it. Out here looking like white man can't jump. Got them. Uh, what's it? I wanna sex you up. That shit. <laughs> he got the glasses from that shit. <laughs> Y'all seen that? It was just the other day. You can Google it. Oh man, stop trying to act cool and all this nonsense. You were cool when you were young. So um we all you think that Smokey Robinson, you think Smokey Robinson was that was dating young Diana Ross, this one, this guy. You think he was caring about uh Isabel, what's her name? Israel, uh Elsie Baker from 1913. No, nah, it was his moment. He didn't care about no Elsie Baker. Elsie Baker was old and she was sewing something and being just as but it all comes out of the Telecom Act. So somebody earlier really connecting it, go look up the Telecom law. What happened was is they destroyed this race. And you're in the middle of it. How did they destroy this race? We used to have talk radio. We used to have radio stations owned locally by black folk. And so then in the at night, you used to have talk radio where we talked about community issues, uh, 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 wealth, and, and how uh, churches. We don't have that no more. It's a... What Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton's Telecom Act did to simplify it is that it went from you used to only be able to own three stations in a corporation. He changed it where you can own unlimited stations, and immediately, almost immediately, around 96, 97, we got stuck in a time machine as a result. They came in, bought up them black stations, and whoever, and they found them a Diddy and a Jay Z, and they said, "Y'all gonna have them today, 138." They are they at 87 now. 
And so, like, they just stuck here, and you, they probably gonna be here till you old. Oh, you just ain't gonna have no retirement. Still clicking through, looking at Diddy with J Lo, because they they set this up for you almost thirty years ago. I have people that was in radio stations, literally that that they came in and just all y'all gotta go. We got the machine gonna tell us who's hot. Diddy again. Wait, it's not 1999. It's 2009. Diddy again. Wait, it's not 1999 or 2000. It's 2019. Diddy again. It's 2023. They don't care. Call her. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hello. Hey, how you doing? Can I share something with you? Yes. So I got something on screen to show you guys how we as black folks, we we don't. I, I think we're misusing the internet. I think the internet has exaggerated the impact of our ADOS lineage and the consequences of, of not having a lot of things broken down so we focus on ourselves and what's the most healthiest. I think that getting away from the church was the problem. You got your own feelings about the pastors and your community and everything else. I'm not arguing about that. But the, the structure, because you don't naturally have it yourselves, this whole model has basically play to the worst parts of yourself and you use the worst parts of the internet how tom what do you mean so there's pinterest and then there's instagram there's pinterest and there's instagram how many of y'all never even been on pinterest it's a whole different community on pinterest i'll go through it in a second actually let me go through it now because y'all know about instagram and celebrity gossip pinterest be having people making cookies i ain't saying instagram don't have a, some of that but it's not it's really celebrity gossip and a bunch of muscles and and jumping jacks and short little quick videos with old music. Now they be having plants, beautiful pictures of your of your bedroom being clean. Pinterest and this I have this successful pins. The art of show how you can show somebody how to cut a potato. Ching, 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 ching. Create. We over here creating, painting the whole picture in the city. Craft pens, meaning getting you some sewing going on and showing them how you sew up some stuff. Your pets inspire somebody. Stay on brand. Okay. So we use an Instagram looking at fights and and I'm not saying other people don't as well, but the volume of escape that we use Instagram for just uh, just a lot is just crazy. So what's the difference in our use of Instagram versus Pinterest? Now this is the Pew Research did this. It is a little old, it's from 2015, but it gives some kind of guidelines so you can kind of see it. Black people using Instagram at 47%. We use Pinterest at 23. White people using Instagram at 21. They use Pinterest at 32. I believe if I had to express it, white people are using the, 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 the process of social media to show you how great their lives are in general. We using it, the internet to figure out how we gonna follow some celebrity to escape this Uber car we drive. Now I'm not saying that it don't have some aspects of that in each group, but generally speaking, we don't even use the internet right. And part of why this is newsworthy, and when I say this, I'm talking about. Let's go back to it. This right here is we have made it newsworthy. Go ahead, caller. Give me your take on Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson. Well. Come on. And uh, a biography or something. And that's why he's trying to get on TV and all of this other junk. And that's what I thought. You know, because who cares at this point? I mean, they both old. Now, I think it would be mission impossible when you get a piece together like that. That it's just, just me being messy. Go ahead. But when you started talking about, when you started talking about those 55 years, I am a boomer, and I remember when Smokey Robinson was with the miracle. You can't see who the see. And when they talk about the joblessness and how the joblessness is only like 3.7%, yeah. and I got on a TV program, I mean, a, whatever it was, and I said, well, you got to take out Uber and Lyft and uh, Postmates. I said, that's not a job. That's a, that's not a real job. Hey man, that's a way, but it is a way for your grandmother to tell you it's your fault that you in her house still. 
I'm just telling you what you you, you can't get a <laughs> go ahead and tell me about Smokey Robinson and that concert you went to at the miracles or you were telling us. I'm just messing with you. I gave my mommy to uh, give me money to uh go to smoke, go see Smokey Robinson. And I'm gonna say don't have no money for that shit. And I you know, I was I was a teenager then. So me and my girlfriend to collect bottles and you got a nipple for the big one, two cents for the little one. What's the book gonna be about? Because we don't need to learn nothing else. We learned it all. We don't need. Wait, wait, wait! But that's what I mean. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay, so a biography that has interest comes from somebody who's relevant. If his music is 50, 60 years old, do who who he see his bio, let me make it bit better. You remember when the five heartbeats came out? That was like 92. That's what the moment he needed to write. Yeah. If you didn't write it then, it's just obituary. <laughs> I'm just saying the truth, man. It's like it, like tell nobody what that's just a, you just gotta write it in your obituary. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure. Can I, I put something on screen? I'm because I'm probably gonna end with you. So Alec Baldwin, I went through it earlier. He uh he done shot somebody. White people gonna go home, eat their turkeys, and live their life. They're gonna find out about this in like two months or like five weeks. But when Snoop got the murder, we got we we watching it. We gotta know. Everybody gotta know at the barbershop. Everybody so it's the most relevant thing in life. It's so relevant that that 50 gonna 50 make like a movie about. Snoop Dogg's 1993 murder to be adapted into Star's miniseries from 50 Cent. Huh. What's wrong? What's I going on with this group? 50 Cent is an internet troll. So I don't have anything to say to him anyway. Mm. But I think that he's going to be in the news. show but i just want to Let you go, Juanita, because I, I. Oh, thank you so much for calling. You killed it. Thank you, Juanita. Killing the show. I appreciate it. So this is Tone Talks. I just wanted to come and have this discussion, talk about this, because I don't even understand what this news is. It's not news. It's not news that Diddy uh, took a shower 
or uh, let's talk about it. Got a facial with the suction. They do the suction in, everywhere now, Diddy. That's nothing decadent and like top notch. Just regular. Got a manicure. Okay, you should. It's not newsworthy that Taraji went on a vacation. Uh, if you ain't go to the moon, then lead us. Just go do your thing. We don't need to hear about it. You're not inspiring nobody. You're just creating craze. I want to talk about it because I don't get none of this nonsense. But I do understand that y'all are stuck in a time capsule thinking that it's 1999 and it's really 2023. I do understand that this covers up a need to do real black politics that deals with the accusations of Russian bots, that deals with a real reparative justice call because your kids need it, that deals with immigration policy, that asks the question of where does black America end at? Where does black America start at? What happens if we don't do nothing next? Because a lot of y'all struggling with that right now. This is Tone Talks. Please go to tonetalks.net, subscribe, Share this video. Let's have this discussion because nobody else is. Thank you.